Hello everyone, and welcome to another review. This time I'm doing something a little different. Uh, instead of talking about headphones, I'm going to talk about a portable music player. Now this is called the FIO, or FIO according to some people, X1. And it's marketed as a portable high resolution music player. And this particular one, it comes in silver, gold, blue and black. And I bought the black one. So this is the box it comes in. Let's open it up, shall we? So these are the accessories that come with it. Uh, at this point, I before I talk about this, I'll talk about the actual player. So here it is. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where have I seen this design before? Well, in the early 2000s, if you thought of an iPod, this is what you thought of. You thought of the wheel design. And this actually goes back to the earlier iPods because this wheel, it moves. This isn't like that one that didn't move later on, which just moved with your thumb without actually having a moving part. This has a moving part. Um, I will get to the inner workings of this when I close the blinds and everything and get the electronics running. <clears throat> but until then, I like to just talk about the design itself. It's quite a bit smaller than the iPod 2. iPod, I think, was about this big. This is quite a bit smaller. It doesn't have a portable hard drive inside like the iPod did. It doesn't have a flash drive, doesn't have any of the sort. What you do have, though, is this slot for a micro SD card. right there and it supports up to 128 gigabytes of storage but you, this comes separately this will not come with the actual unit itself so just bear that in mind when you factor in the total cost if you decide to buy one of these so on the left you have these are two volume buttons uh, the power button this is a back button next song and previous song and this is a menu button. Now, another thing about the design that you're looking at right now, this is not how it comes. This is a sticker. This wood design thing is a sticker that is provided with the X1. I'll show you the other ones in a minute. And I've put this one on because I, even though it looks quite like fake wood, I just still prefer the wood design over the other ones. And also, this is a plastic sort of exoskeleton side, pro side and back protector that's also provided. In fact, when I opened it, got it out of the box, it had it on already, so it's not even like something you have to put on later. But underneath, you can easily just, if you for some reason do not want this, which I can't imagine why, you could just take it off and use it like a normal uh, iPod, just take good care of it, I guess. Um, it has a screen protector on. Those are also provided. You get a few screen protectors to put on. And that's also, I would say, quite a good bit of value added. Because you don't want to scratch your screen or anything. Even though it's not, it wouldn't be as detrimental as scratching, let's say, a smartphone screen. You still do not want to scratch your screens. Okay, so this is my custom, the way I've customized it. But let's see the other options. Now this is what was going to be my first choice. This is like a black design, but as you can see, it's kind of like a metallic looking black. This was going to be my first choice, but then I decided on the wood. And then there's this, America. I'm sure my American friends would absolutely love this. Yeah. So keep in mind, this is a Chinese company. Fio, Fio, whatever, is a Chinese company. And they're providing this. Is it a marketing ploy? I don't know. No idea. But hey, it's, it's an interesting cover. I'm sure people in our America would love it. And yeah, some instructions you know, before using for the first time. Oh, these are the extras extras that I didn't use with this 
So I'm not sure where this was supposed to go. <laughs> if anything, uh, the way it looks like they have the wheel here, this was supposed to cover the screen. But why the hell would I want to cover my screen with the sticker? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But yeah, some instructions in various languages. Um, oh yeah, more screen, another screen protector right here. In case in a plastic wrap. All right, so I've showed you the box. I've showed you the contents of the box. I've showed you the FIO itself in a good light. And now I will see you in a minute as I turn on the blinds and continue with my review. So I hope these light conditions are better to explain the inner workings of the FIO. Um, so let's get it started up. Power button. a welcome sign. I couldn't read what it said but it says something like long life love Fio or something. So this is the interface. Alright. So quite a bit different than the iPod obviously. I mean they're not going to rip off everything. <laughs> I'm not just not saying the design itself is too much of a ripoff, but just saying. So the scroll wheel is. I believe I did watch a review before I bought this where someone was complaining about how you can just go endlessly and it's really hard to like get a good sense of where you want to go. Like it's hard to build up any kind of precision with this. Yeah, it really is. It's very and it's really. Like if you wanted to go to the now playing all of a sudden, you can't just quickly make a quick turn to the left because it's going to go all the way around. So, and you can't just get comfortable with the movement, like if you want to get to something exactly. And also, if you... It doesn't feel very consistent, it, it tends to skip a few. Oh well. Alright, so let's go to the system settings first. Now. One thing I've noticed about this is if I put more songs in here, I have to, if, before it registers in the device and before I can use them, you have to rescan your entire library and that does take a while depending on how many songs you have obviously. So you have to go to, click on this, update media library, press it down and it'll start going through every single song, there's a little counter over there, it'll count all the songs, so thousands of songs will go through. It could take a while. This is a actual, I would count this as a major disadvantage towards this. Okay. Key lock settings, lock screen, screen timeout, 60 seconds, uh, the options here, you can, yeah, okay. Scroll with options. All right, brightness, let's make it nice and bright for you. All right. Idle power off on. Idle power off time five minutes, sleep off, sleep timer. Now the select output, this is a major thing about this because this is not just a music player, this is a DAP, a DAP, <laughs> this is an audio player. So if you want to use the FIO to play your music and you want to listen to it on a substantially hard to drive pair of headphones, what you could do is you could use a cable and connect it to your headphone amplifier and then connect your headphones to that. Now the problem is if you're going to use the headphone output on that you're going to get a very muddy sound, a very distorted sound because it's just not designed to give you the full signal because you're not you're not going to get the full signal if you have it on headphone mode but if you switch it to line out which is now switched to line out you have to be extremely careful to not do this when you have headphones in. And I don't mean um, just if you have portable headphones plugged in here and you switch it to line out. First of all, it won't let you do that while you're playing music for good reason because the difference in sound could. It's shockingly loud with this. The line out version. Full output, full signal being sent to your headphone amplifier. And it's clearer, much, much clearer than the headphone out, obviously. But you need to take severe precaution when switching this. 
<laughs> you don't you don't want to forget you don't want to leave it like this and forget about it and the next time you go out and you plug it in and all of a sudden wow you feel like the drivers of your little earphones will blow up because it's that loud so just keep in mind to switch them back if you're going to switch them around theme okay I've chosen the blue theme but you've got the uh, uh, gray pink green blue orange which was my previous one and uh, some kind of light brown or bronze actually so I'll switch to orange oh, that's pretty good all right support inline headphone controller control this will be for those headphones that have the little thing attached with the buttons for the next and back and so I haven't tested them myself I don't have a pair of headphones like that those usually come with like smartphones and stuff but I don't use smartphone headphones so I haven't really tested this out but if it works great if you, it's more convenient you don't have to just always have this on file name display yes I've noticed this uh, when you're going through the music I'll go through in a minute the music library you'll see the file names quite a bit um, I'll leave it on for now so that was the system settings oh, oh, oh I just didn't take my own advice I forgot to switch the output again. All right, now to play settings. So you've got the play mode, repeat. First it was on repeat, now it's on repeat the same song. Now it's on shuffle, now it's on normal. Help us put it back to repeat. So resume mode, off. This means if you turn it off and turn it back on, you can just resume the song from where it was. Gapless playback on. Yes, I like to have this on. I like a nice seamless transition between songs. Um, max volume 100. Now, this is something which I do mess with quite a bit. Like, if I'm going to be using my IEMs, oh, it's very precise. You can go all the way down to like 80. Like, you have single units in selecting this. I like having mine at 55. I think that's a nice, safe thing. It powers uh, quite well. Both my DT1350 and my earphones so 55 it is default volume by memory so yes when you turn the phone off and you turn it back on your default volume will be the same for me it'll be 55 but you can have it to custom and just by memory I'll just leave it on memory fixed volume setting 33 so pretty much the first time we turn this on the volume will be at 33 a nice medium low volume so you can balance it out from where you want equalizer so I have my I was testing something and I have the equalizer quite basic right now, but let's get get rid of that. Oh, and uh, the scroll wheel goes to each individual one. If you want to change it, you click down, and then you move it like this. All right. So if you want to change the volume, like if you want to change the equalizer settings, you use the next song and previous song buttons. So right now it's on custom, off. Rock, classical, jazz, pop, dance, vocal, metal, and that weird bassy custom thing I was trying. So I'm just going to put it on flat right now. So, very basic equalizer settings. Um, you do have that custom one to put in whatever you want. You can experiment with that. Balance. I suppose this would be helpful with, with those headphones that are just. They just don't seem to be right, like don't seem to be completely balanced. You can adjust it as you want, make it like more volume coming out of the left or right and stuff like that. Play through folders on. So yes, there is an option like you can just go through the folders and you can play songs directly out of them. You don't have to go through the artist, album, that kind of thing, like the old iPod. You can actually go directly to the files, which is my next thing. So these are all some folders that I have. These are the names of folders that I have. Let's see. Okay, there's a wrap folder. So let's open up this wrap folder. Now you have a lot of songs in here and none of these are arranged. These are all by different artists. This is just the same wrap folder that I have in here where I just wanted to copy stuff really quickly so I copied all my rap music into one folder and put it on here. So if you don't want to deal with all that, obviously, you can just go the classical iPod way. 
or the classic mp3 way is where you go to category the category now when you open up the category you'll have options all songs so if you want to have one long playthrough album artist favorites and genre and then playlists so let's go to artists I'll oh, see that inconsistent scroll wheel is kind of bugging me right now artists now you have all these artists right here so let's say I want to go to do I have Pink Floyd yes I have all these albums I can choose from so the design is pretty basic anyone who's familiar with an iPod will be completely fine in this <laughs> in many ways with the scrolling and the, but I do admit from what I remember the iPod scrolling was a lot more pleasant than this one and then obviously the now playing so the album art does show up sometimes it's a bit squashed sometimes it's actually really good the responsiveness of skipping songs is not very good as you can see it's taking quite a while to go through now if I do it very slowly but if I do it really quickly no one reason for this might be because I have a lot of flak files on here and flak files might take a longer time to like switch or something I'm not exactly sure but it's not very responsive in that regard so yeah album art does show up the actual LCD screen is nothing to write home about. It's not that great. It's okay. But it's not like amazing or anything. I'm sure the higher models of this, this is just the X1. This is the most basic one. There's the X3, the X5, which is around, I think, 200 something dollars, maybe more. And they have a slot, I think they have expanded slots. Like this one, this one has one, those might have two. Uh, better interface, more responsive, just, you know, upgrades, full-on upgrades. This is the most basic. But what does the most basic one actually get you? Well, the sound quality in this is very, very neutral. Now, when I say, or when they say, high-resolution audio player, what do they mean? They mean, yes, this can play FLAC files. This can play Apple lossless files. I have run FLAC files 24 bits and 192 hertz on this. Seriously, 192. This goes that high. So this can play all your vinyl rips, which are 2496. This can play uh, 2448. Of obviously, CD quality 44. I haven't tried anything lower because I have pride. <laughs> I'm not going to go lower than that. But yeah, um, MP3s, FLAX, Apple lossless. Vinyl rips, Super Audio CD rips, DVD audio rips, all kinds of stuff. There might be some um, file types that I'm not covering, but I don't really remember. Maybe OGG, I'm not really used to those. So, I'll turn it back on. So if you want to turn it back on, you can't just keep pressing these buttons. You have to go directly to the power button. So... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with those file formats, so I haven't really tried them. So I'm sure on the website you can get all the information regarding those things. So the sound quality itself, very neutral, like I said. Um, if you're going to use this to drive or to send music to your amplifier, I wouldn't call it um, the most, the best sound in the world. It's a bit muffled, even with the line out version. A bit muffled, a bit, um, a little too warm, and a little distorted. But if you use this with a normal headphone, like low ohm, easy to drive pair of headphones, like I'll give you examples. Here are my Zero Audio Carbo Tenores. These run just fine with this, absolutely. And my. DT1350. Now this is th this is 80 ohms, and this plays it with more power 
than my Samsung Galaxy S6 does. Definitely does. But the sound on the Samsung Galaxy S6 is more fun than it is on this. This is more neutral. In fact, when I first got the DT1350, I was having trouble finding out what exactly the sound I wanted to come out of them. Like, I wasn't getting the sound that I really wanted. The first time I actually heard it properly was when I connected it to my amplifier, my shit Asgard 2. Okay, maybe it needs a little more supposed burn-in. Then I plugged it in to my phone, and suddenly my phone started working quite well with it, without any equalizer or anything. But then this was still holding out on me. Like, I still couldn't understand why doesn't it sound good on this. This was the last to reach... <laughs> Lost one at the party, basically. But when it comes to high resolution audio players, you really, this, I mean, the price of this is usually $99. No, 99 pounds, but $99 in America. I've seen it go as low as $69. So this is pretty good. And you don't have to get 128 gigabytes of storage, the micro SD. You can just pick up like a $5, you know, 8 gigabytes. That's all you need. You don't need the most expensive one. I like the flexibility that this gives you. I like that you can carry multiple SD cards and just plug and play and everything's fine. But what I don't like are the system where you have to manually scan all the files. I don't like the wheel. I don't like the overall it's very sluggish design. The sound that I talked about you can't, I mean, for the price, it is good for the price. For portables, it's great. But if you want to use it as a DAC, a DAP, if you want to plug it into your iPhone amplifier and use the more substantial iPhones, it's a little problematic. I mean, some people who aren't as picky, they might not have a problem with it so much. But I can hear problems if I compare it to, let's say, my Modi 2 Uber, which is $100, um, $150 or my Dragonfly uh, 1.2, which is about 125, 150, up to, MSRP is 150, I'm pretty sure. So, in summation, would I recommend this? Mm, if your phone doesn't have an SD card, because lots of modern phones They've done away with this feature for some reason. I don't know why. Um, looking at you, Samsung <laughs> S6 didn't have that. The S7 does, so yeah. Then you don't really need a, a reason to buy this. The sound quality-wise, like I said, it's more neutral on this. But it's, it's more lively on my phone. And like I said, the DT1350 took a longer time to sound good with this than it did with my phone. But you can, this is more easy to swap out. And I don't know, there's a very traditional thing about this. Oh, oh, and definitely, your smartphone will not play 24 bit 192 hertz music. This will, though, but that won't. So if you do have those super high quality, high bitrate files, this is what you need. And if you're on a budget, if you can afford much more, then go for it, absolutely. This does drive my DT1350 though. And the DT1350 is 18 ohms. This drives them. So, I think it's quite inexpensive. You can just pick it up, try it out. If you don't like it, it doesn't matter. You have a backup. So, that would be my recommendation. Yes, I would say for the price, this is absolutely worth it. So, thank you for checking out my review. And I'll see you next time.